This is a solar carport, and today we're going to be using unmanned drones and thermal technology to inspect every panel in this 2.6 megawatt system. So let's get started. All right, so today we have all the drone gear and we're gonna be doing a maintenance inspection of this uh, carport here. Drones have really been new in the last couple of years to doing these solar inspections. And what actually happens is we would have a thermal camera uh, all attached to the drone and it's going to fly autonomously along um, all the panels and locate uh, anomalies that are present on them. So we're talking things like string outages, uh, cell hotspots, or uh, cracking or offline modules. But before we get started with flying, uh, we're gonna go take a walk around and determine if there's any obstacles in the way so we can be sure, sure that the drone is gonna be not hitting anything uh, during the inspection. Okay, so it looks like all we have is a couple of trees and light poles, which are actually going to be uh, much below where we're actually gonna be flying at. Uh, so what do you say, let's go set up all the drone gear. Okay, so we just got all the drone gear set up and ready to go. And uh, today it's gonna be a high of 95 degrees. Right now it's almost 9 a.m. at 85 degrees. So when we do fly in the summertime at these really high temperature environments, we have to be very careful with our, especially our batteries, because um, these can definitely overheat um, if you get, go past the operating temperatures um, on them. And I wanted to show you this over here. Uh, so this is like the, um, our flight plan for this mission. And at, you, can see the, you can see this is a satellite image of the carports in the parking lot here. And uh, these green lines uh, that are showing up crisscrossing like this, that's actually the pathway the drone will be flying uh, during the mission. So the mission is going to be actually pretty much autonomous. Uh, so most of it, I'm not gonna be flying manually, it's gonna be flying itself. And then over here we can see, actually before I take off the underbelly of the panels, on the thermal view and we already inputted all the correct settings uh, we need for the inspection so uh, there's a few more things we have to do before we get started and so let's go ahead out there and get that done okay so we have these two devices right here which are crucial for doing a proper inspection uh, this right here is called an anemometer it actually tells us the wind speed um, our, of our current location so we can see the fan is going off at three miles per hour which is really low because uh, the maximum we can do this inspection at is 15 miles per hour. So we're going to be good on that. And this right here is going to be our solar irradiance meter. So this actually tells us um, how much sun energy is coming down and, and hitting the panels. So all we have to do is line, line up our sensor um, to the pitch that the panels are facing up towards the sky. And it seems like we're, we're looking at around 400 watts per meter squared. And we actually need 600 watts per meter squared to do the inspection according to IEC standards. Uh, so we might wait an, a half an hour or maybe an hour and once the sun gets higher in the sky to start, uh, start flying. Okay, so as we wait for the sun to get higher in the sky here, I wanted to talk about some factors to consider when doing say a carport and how that's actually different than, do, than doing a ground mounted solar system. Uh, so for one, the carport behind me is actually a dual tilt system, which means the panels are gonna be facing kind of inward at a um, right as a V shape right towards the middle. And so for this circumstance, which this isn't the most common way that, that carports are designed. A lot of times you might see them as just a flat uh, one angle, uh, but we, we need to be aware of our gimbal pitch. So this is gonna be uh, how the camera is tilted on when it's flying the inspection. Uh, so for the, the dual tilt system, we need it to be nadir straight down at a 90 degree angle to avoid as much sun glare as possible. And one additional thing to keep in mind when doing these inspections is that uh, this is going to be more than likely in a public um, area, like a par this parking lot right here. You know, we're not in a secluded solar farm 
with fences all around with a, an access key to get into. Uh, so you have to be aware of confrontation, confrontations, people coming up to you. Um, you know, just a couple, couple of months ago, I was doing a carport inspection in, in a prison parking lot. Of course, I had permission from the prison. And during that one hour, I had four people come up to me. And uh, luckily I did have someone else with me um, during, uh, for the inspection so they could talk to them while I was busy flying. Because you definitely don't want to have some kind of argument uh, thinking that someone, uh, thinking, someone thinking that you're actually stalking them with the drone while you're up there flying trying to do your job. Something else to keep in mind is actually going to be the, the height that these panels are at. Uh, so when we do these inspections, we actually calculate our flight altitude based off the surface of the panels. Uh, so let's just say when doing a ground mounted system, we're flying at 100 feet. Now when we come and do a carport, we won't be flying at 100 feet anymore. We have to actually calculate how much um, height these are elevated off the ground. So to do this, we have to bring uh, this tool with us, called a tape measure. I'm not sure if you've ever used one of these before. So then we have to walk over here and bring this up to figure out how high these panels are off the ground here. Hopefully it doesn't bend midway through. Oh, we got a little bit of wind up there. Oh. All right, we got this one. That, oh. Three hours later. All right, there we go. Coming down. All right, it looks like we're cruising here at 16 feet. Uh, so now we can calculate our inspection altitude. You know, it's not like that there's any drawings for this stuff. Of course, that won't, the drawings won't tell us how high these are. We just have to bring the tape measure out and check. Okay, so it looks like we were at the 600 watts per meter squared mark. So let's get started and go fly. All right, so we had the drone up there flying and take a look at the screen right here. You can actually see the thermal image of the solar car ports right there. And uh, we're taking an image every 1.5 seconds. And then usually during these inspections, we'll take thousands of photos, um, both um, thermal and RGB. RGB being just a, a normal photograph, like you say you take on your phone, where it has all the visible uh, color and light on it. And uh, we're also gonna be doing this inspection. Uh, we're cruising right now at 125 feet. As we are flying here, I do want to talk a little bit about solar carports in general. So I'm sure you may have seen these types of installations before as they really are gaining popularity around the country. A lot of times you most often see these structures at shopping areas, uh, schools, and business districts. Uh, so these PV systems provide many benefits, including uh, making valuable use of land in heavily urbanized areas. So imagine the energy that could be harnessed by installing solar carports in these otherwise wasted spaces. Uh, considering these heavily populated areas don't have available land for a more tra traditional ground mounted farm. And by producing all this energy right where it is being utilized, there is also no need to put it on the grid, requiring it to travel a long distance on transmission lines. A few of the other added bonuses of carports is protection from the elements. So vehicles will have shade in the summer months and shelter against rain and snow. And since many of these installs also have lighting underneath, uh, they actually keep the parking lot lit during the night uh, to better deter any thieves uh, from breaking into vehicles. They're also beginning to integrate carports with electric vehicle charging stations. Uh, this actually allows for a more clean and efficient method of charging these vehicles and reduces the infrastructure needed to supply power to the stations. So with the increase of these carports being used around the country, more inspections will need to be performed during commissioning and for maintenance. And accessing these panels is clearly more challenging compared to their ground or even roof mounted counterparts, which is why drones are going to be an ever increasing method for doing these inspections moving forward. Okay, so the drone is about to be done the inspection. This is one of our last passes that it's gonna take. I'm cruising at 31% battery and the batteries are actually around, around 45, 46 Celsius. 
with 50 Celsius being the maximum 122 degrees Fahrenheit that you want to operate these at um, before you want to bring it back and land. Uh, so I did see a good amount of actually anomalies just by looking at the view of the panels when uh, doing the inspection. And we're gonna actually go back and revisit that. Uh, I'm gonna manually fly the drone over some of those issues so we can get a closer look at those. Uh, but it's about to end up right now. And what it's gonna do is actually finish up there, hover, and then I have to just go manually uh, fly back. All right, so I put the drone back pretty far, and you can see the scale um, of all these panels here. And you might be able to point out some of these little areas that are having uh, some of those issues. Uh, so let's bring the altitude down a bit here and get closer and so we can check these um, problems out. We can see these two modules right here are having a bunch of cell, looks like cell multi um, defects or basically multiple cells on a panel or having hot spots. And we can actually see each individual uh, square box here, um, each of them you know, being cells, and uh, see how some of these hot spots are more severe than other ones. And this is a common occurrence on a lot of these canopies. We can actually go over to this one right next door and see a similar issue. Um, of course, you can't really diagnose these too well uh, straight um, looking at them. You're gonna want to upload this stuff to your post-processing software um, where they can better identify and get all the, the metadata out of the image, um, like the radio, um, radiometric data to see um, how hot these temperatures actually are um, so you can better classify exactly what issue this is. Okay, so I just looked around and found this other panel over here and it appears to be a diode issue. You can see this purple box on the left side of this one panel here and how it's kind of stretching all the way down as, as well as a couple hot spots here. Okay, so we we're just flying around and we saw this one little spot right here, which we actually thought was a place where the panel actually burned uh, through. But um, at closer inspection here, if we switch over, over from the thermal uh, to the visible camera right here and we get down closer, we can actually see that this is just a water bottle on top of the panels here. <laughs> So I want to touch a bit on thermal cameras and specifically something called color palettes, which are actually different options for viewing and capturing thermal images. Think of these like filters when you're uploading a photo on say social media, different filters bring out or even lessen specific features in the image like contrast, saturation, or exposure. Basically color palettes are different coloring schemes that are used to depict thermal images. Uh, since infrared energy wavelengths are not perceivable by the human eye on the electromagnetic spectrum, thermal cameras add something called false color. And just like digital images, thermal images are made up of pixels. So in thermal imaging, each individual pixel represents a specific temperature data point. And these data points are assigned to unique shades and colors based on their value, uh, meaning that as the thermal sensor detects changes in heat energy, it will express this change by adjusting the color or shade of the pixel. Therefore, switching palettes changes the appearance of a scene and highlights key areas of a thermal image without altering any temperature data. Now, there is a lot of color palettes to choose from, and you should not just pick a random one for your inspection. Each has their own use case, and one palette may bring out a point of interest to your attention, whereas another one wouldn't have. A few of the most commonly used palettes include Fusion and Ironbow, which are general purpose palettes that quickly identify thermal anomalies. Hot objects are shown in lighter, uh, warm colors, while colder objects are shown in dark, cool colors. This is commonly used when relaying basic thermal information to people outside of the thermography world. Uh, for example, ever since we were in grade school, we identified hot objects as red and cold ones as blue. And so I often photograph and record these explainer videos with the Fusion palette on so that more people can easily relate to the information that they are viewing. 
Next, we have white hot, which displays warmer objects in white and cooler ones in black. And so you may have noticed that actually I flew the inspection with this palette on, and there's a reason for that, as this is typically uh, the, the preferred industry standard when it comes to aerial inspections uh, for identifying every type of anomaly, as well as uh, for the best results when doing post-processing. And then we have black hot, which is sort of the opposite of white hot, uh, where it displays warmer objects as black and cooler ones as white. And there's so many more that I didn't mention. Okay, so we just finished up doing the entire inspection and everything went super smoothly. Uh, as you saw, we were able to find a good amount of module and cell level defects. And if you're looking for a bit more information of different types of defects that a thermal drone can detect or um, how these inspections are performed, I highly, highly recommend you go look in the video description where I'm gonna be putting a couple of article links uh, that will talk about these details uh, much more thoroughly. So that's all for today's video. If you enjoy the content, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions at all about using drones in solar or doing these inspections, always feel free to, to directly message me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on there. And if you want some more information about having us uh, come out and fly our drones to inspect some of your sites, uh, then you can set up a consultation call on our website. All right, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.